Hi there, Coach Sage Cande of SageRunning.com here. I'm joined by a special guest in our running form tutorial. This is Brandon Johnson, How's Metro going, State guys? alum. He's run the sub 14 minute 5K, right? You ran 13.55 for 5K. A long time ago. 404 in the mile. More recently qualified for the 2020 US Olympic trials running 218 in the marathon. So he's got that sub 14 minute 5k speed, 218 marathon, OTQ qualifier. Brandon's gonna show us what some really good running form looks like. Let's get started. So Brandon, when you're thinking about proper running form, what are some tips that you would give to people? Some of the most important things is not to really focus on if you're running on your forefoot or heel, that's a huge, I guess, misconception in the running community is being on your toes is the most efficient. I would say just let the chips fall where they may and have a little bit of a quicker turnover. So not really focusing too much on being a heel or forefoot striker, but just a little bit of a quicker transition while you're running. Tip number one, don't worry too much about your foot strike being a forefoot strike or a heel strike. Rather focus on landing with your whole foot underneath your body on impact. Again, back to the legs like wheels analogy. You want to imagine that your feet are kind of rolling over the ground and that when your foot is coming down into contact with the ground, it's already parallel to the ground. You don't want it pointing upwards too much. But just the idea that you're flowing over the ground effortlessly like you see Brandon doing here, uh, he actually is a pretty good forefoot midfoot striker uh, because he has a really fast cadence. He's got a lot of fast 5k and mile speed, but you compare that to my foot strike, which is more of a back of the foot heel strike. I'm not trying to deliberately heel strike, but that's just kind of the differences in how I run compared to Brandon. What you want to avoid is an actual nasty heel strike where you're landing too far in, in front of your center of mass. Uh, you can see in this picture the toes angled upwards and the impact force is actually in front of the body. You want to make sure that foot is landing underneath your body or even almost imagine it landing behind your body as you move over the ground. So just landing like more on the whole part of the foot and making sure you're under your center of mass, under your body. Like you don't want to be overreaching yeah. with a heel strike, but you don't want to be running on your tiptoes either. Yeah, really engaging the glutes. You know, when you're going uphill, you're forced more on your toes. When you're going downhill, you're kind of on that heel a little bit more. So when you're trying to increase your speed, obviously you're going to be more on your toes. So when you have that happy medium, that slow jog, you know, you're in that more of that mid stance position. So. Um, I always look at it as being like a race car and having different gears and when you're in those different gears you're on different parts of your foot. Tip number two. Stride rate or cadence is the number of steps that you take in one minute. It is generally best to keep this number above 165 most of the time. This reduces impact force, it reduces the risk for injury, and it generally will improve your running efficiency or economy. A higher cadence or stride rate also helps prevent you from heel striking and landing too far out in front of your body. It's important to keep focusing on your turnover being quick and light. If you want to run faster and with better form, eventually you need to touch on speed still from time to time. And that brings up a good, speed, uh, good point with speed training to improve your running form. Would you say like doing things like strides, accelerations, doing some track workouts, working on that faster than 5K race pace is gonna help kinda iron out some kinks in your form? Absolutely, a uh, huge fan of hill strides, you know, doing hill bursts. Uh, now you see a lot of people implementing Olympic style weightlifting, just more of that explosive dynamic work to get you on your toes. And uh, that goes a long way in the long run. Tip number three. Your running form probably won't look exactly like Brandon's or other top elite runners, but that's okay. There are individual differences between runners and some differences will depend on genetics. These are just the basic physics and mechanics of efficient running, but what you're really seeking is your best running form for your body type.
Tip number four, only makes very small adjustments to your running form very slowly over time. Consult your doctor before trying anything new. This it is usually best to just focus on one thing at a time for each run or day, instead of trying to remember five different things all at once. So thanks for watching our running form tutorial. Thanks, uh, Brandon, for demonstrating thanks some for great. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, pleasure. Great form. Uh, if you want to see more Brandon, check him out on Instagram. I'll put a link to his Instagram handle right there, as well as in the description below. Thank you again, guys. Be sure to subscribe on here for more of these types of videos. Check out our running form playlist also, and our coaching website, sagerunning.com, for training plans. Any service, any distance. Old beautiful Boulder, Colorado. Hope your running's going well. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.